Hi everyone. Um, I'm really sorry that our ha our last meeting has to be um, via video like this and that I can't be talking to you in person, but I wanted to share a short story with you about the idea of being called and being sent and what that means. So my story is about my journey getting here to being a youth minister, to teaching PSR to all of you. When I was in college, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, I started out as a music major. And I realized that wasn't a good fit. So I became an English major and I loved it. I loved writing, I loved reading. It fit me pretty well. But then I came to my senior year and I said, what am I going to do now? And I had no idea. I had a job. Um, I got a job, I thought I was gonna love it. I didn't, I hated it. And that job came to an end. And I was sitting there and I was like, I don't know what I want to do with my life. So I went to grad school. And I went to grad school for something called nonprofit administration. Well, after doing this grad program and getting a bunch of internships in, in different uh, aspects of nonprofit work, like marketing, and public relations and fundraising, I, ne I never really felt like I fit. And so I tried applying for jobs that were kind of related, like a college admissions officer. I never got anywhere. Never even got called for an interview. And boy, I felt really crummy. I felt like I was never going to succeed. Until one day I was talking to my friend and she turned to me and said, Al, you're struggling so much finding a job. Have you thought about working for the church? And I laughed. I was like, I don't have the qualifications to do that. I don't know the first thing about what they want. I don't have the right knowledge. I can't do that. And she looked at me and said, Al, you have spent your whole life volunteering for, for, for the church. She said, you have spent since middle school helping with vacation Bible school. And then when we were in high school, Excuse me, helping with vacation Bible camp? She said, Al. And then when, after we got confirmed, she said, you went back and ran that confirmation retreat every year. She's, she was like, don't waste that. Just try. So I laughed it off. And being the stubborn person I, I am, ignored it. And then I was thinking, and I brought it up to several other friends, mostly as a joke. They did not take it as a joke. Actually, they all agreed. It was something I should pursue. So I called up my youth minister and she's like a mentor to me. And I said, Terry, my friends are suggesting this. What do you think? And she said, well, come in, let's talk. So I went to her office and we talked about it. And by the end, I felt like maybe I shouldn't ignore this anymore. So I said, all right, 
and I went and I applied. I applied for one job and didn't get a call. And I said, see, this wasn't meant to be. You guys were wrong. And every single one of them said, don't count it out yet. Try again. And I did. And that's how I ended up here. Because that second job I applied for, that second job, that was this one. I was like, oh my God. Right? I came in and I, I had a phone interview. And I thought it went okay. And then I had an in-person interview. And I thought that went pretty well. And then few days later, I had friends text me and they said, Hey, uh, that job just called me, uh, doing a reference check. I said, Oh my God. <coughs> I was like, really? And they said, yeah. I said, okay, that's, that's a good sign. And then I got a call. We want you to come in for a second interview. And I said, all right. So I dressed up, put on my suit. My car was almost out of gas. So I borrowed my mom's car. I drove the seven minutes from my house to, uh, to work to St. Jones and I walk in for my second interview and I sit down and I'm all nervous and they looked at me and they said so we called you in here to offer you this job and we started talking things were going really well they gave me a tour I met some people And uh, the rest is history. Because for the first time in my life, I feel like I'm where I'm supposed to be. I was called to be here to do this job. You are called to be here too. From your parents' choice to baptize you, to you still having faith, to showing up for PSR, to choosing to go forward and get confirmed, to doing your best to live as a Catholic, as a Christian, you are called to be here. And you'll be called to many more things in your life. Many more. Jesus, God, they call us. He calls us. And then he sends us. He sends us with these, these conversion moments. And these conversion moments are turning points in our faith. <clears throat> They're how we're able to get from point A to point B and still have our faith intact. We are all then sent out from these conversion moments with a plan from God, guided by our faith, our gifts, and the Holy Spirit. My moment of conversion, this latest one, happened to be a low point in my life. But I'm asking you, let this, this class, this video, be one of many conversion moments for you. Take this chance. Take what you've learned and use it 
<clears throat> use it to go out and to share God's message, to share our faith, to share God's love. Not necessarily through words, but through action. Show the world that you're called to be a Christian, that you're called to be a Catholic by loving and serving others. Just as Jesus taught us to do. What does he say? The greatest commandment is to love others as I love you, to love your neighbor as yourself. During the Last Supper, that's exactly what he taught the disciples by washing their feet. To go out and serve others as I have served you. That's the most powerful thing we can do. That's what Christianity and our faith and, 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 and what God tells us to do. That's what it all boils down to. Loving and serving others with mercy and grace, empathy and compassion, forgiveness. To look with God's eyes at the other person, whoever that may be. The only choice that you have to make right now is whether or not you are willing to take that step. To go out and try to do better, be better, love better. Just a little bit more every day. Strive to work in God's image a little bit more every day. That's how you share the good news. That's how you share the gospel. That's how you share Jesus's life and sacrifice. It's the best way to do it. So I'd like to close with a prayer that I started the year off with. This is a prayer for Catholic social teaching that was originally written for the Archdiocese of Milwaukee for their Catholic charities. All people are sacred, made in the image and likeness of God. People do not lose dignity because of disability, poverty, age, lack of success, or race. All people are social. We realize our dignity and rights in relationship with others. In community, all can flourish and thrive. We are one body. When one suffers, we all suffer. All people then have a fundamental right to life, food, shelter, healthcare, education, and employment. We must work to give all people the option to participate in the decisions that affect their lives. People have a right to decent and productive work, fair wages, private property, and economic initiative. The economy exists to serve people, not the other way around. The moral tests of a society, the truest assessment of love, is defined by how it treats its most vulnerable members. <coughs> <coughs> the poor have the most urgent moral claim on the conscience of a nation. 
not only do we belong to each other, but we belong to the earth. God's creation is as sacred and social as each one of us. We are one human family. Our responsibilities to each other cross national, racial, economic, and ideological differences. And together, we are called to work globally for justice, for the common good of all. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.